the last time we tried to do this when uh, Mr. Raptor was hungry, you saw he got a little little, uh, little frisky, got a hold of my hand. So I'm going to use today a tool that I typically use with my mink. It's pretty simple what it is. It's just a little wire, strand of wire bent into a little hook. And this is what I use on an aggressive mink. You see it's just a little wire that I bend into kind of a hook shape. And it, it basically saves my fingers. In the case of mink, it allows me to put a, a leash on with gloves. And in this case, I'm not going to use gloves, but it gets my fingers out of the, the, the uh, range of fire on this little guy. So let's see how this works. First time I've used it on a little Mom, raptor. Mom. Cheese. Cheese? How come you always say cheese, cute little kid? Oh, raptor's ready to go. Look at that. He is hungry and anxious. He's looking up when I open it. Says, hey, let's, let's get this show on the road. Hold on here, buddy. Let me get this hooked on to you. All right, and smooth as could be. You see why that's such a useful tool? I can keep my fingers out of the way, and I can get it on without stressing the animal out. It's just a wonderful little tool. I invented that years ago for feisty mink. Hey, guys. There we go, and he's got his leash on. No blood. Quick and easy, didn't stress the animal out. Didn't cut up my fingers. Okay, so let's see if we can continue that not cutting up fingers statement. Hey, little man. You're hungry, huh? You're hungry and feisty. Come climb up my hand, let's get out of there. Look, here's my hand. My hands are lift out. Come on. I'm going to see if you'll come to me, so I don't have to come to you. You want to come up my arm? Hmm? Let's see, so he's been digging. Yeah, he's been digging a bunch. Okay, come over here, buddy. Just going to move real slow. There we go. There we go, look. That was smooth, huh? That was smooth. Good job, little man. Good job, Raptor. Oh, I love this new tool. See, this is one of the beautiful things, is having all that experience training crazy animals. A totally different species, not even remotely related, and the exact same method worked perfectly, like flawlessly. Good job, little man. I didn't stress him out one bit, and I didn't get any chewing on my finger, which honestly, I don't mind getting bit so much. The most important part is that we're not stressing him out, that he's seeing us as a positive thing. Hey, this is a cool guy who reaches in my cage and gets me out. You know, that's what we want. I could deal with getting bit, you could just put gloves on, you know. That's an easy thing to avoid, and it's not that big of a deal when it happens. This guy's tiny, I mean seriously, his bite is a joke. But what's important is not stressing him out and making interactions with me a positive experience. That's what's important. One thing you want to make sure is you don't show him the purple tongs until you're ready to give him food. You don't, you don't want to desensitize him to seeing the tongs and having them mean nothing. You only want them to come out just as feeding begins. We're going to take the food right to him. So what we're feeding him today is a... Uh, house mouse that we caught while out ratting. We know it was in a safe place where it shouldn't have any uh, poisons or anything like that. And it's had several months of freezing to kill off parasites. And we've cut it in chunks because it's too big for him to swallow. He can't swallow it whole, so we've cut it into chunks that he can manage. And this is actually his second meal on the same mouse. He's eaten the other first half a different day. It's yummies. It's not you, it's yummy. He goes, oh, <laughs> yummy mouse, oh, yummy. Now what we're trying to do is keep it pretty simple. We want it to just get him accustomed to eating outside the cage is all we're really doing. We're not asking him to come to us. We're not asking him to do anything special. We just want him eating outside the cage to become normal and natural for him.
And we're also reinforcing that the purple tongs and the whistle mean food is coming. So we're reinforcing that idea and getting him accustomed to doing it outside the cage since that's still a new thing to him. Now he's finished his little mouse meal. Let's see if we could get a couple super worms down him. This is a super worm that was uh, recently shedded, so it's all white. There go the thongs, buddy. You gotta just grab a hold of the... Look, look, here we go. Grab the worm, not the thongs. There you go, look. <laughs> Grab the worm. There you go. Here's another super worm. Oh, you want to hold one, Ellie? <laughs> Ellie likes playing with two. the super worms. Here you go. My two, Daddy. You want to hold one, too? Okay, here, all of you can hold one, too. I got two now. You got one? Mm -hmm. Me, too. Show, I don't want to go get Ellie. it. Ellie. Ellie likes the super worms, huh? I got it, Daddy. I catch it. You catch it? Good job, Ellie. Don't bite me. I catch it. That's cute. You catch it? Good job. I catch it. So Olive saw me with Raptor on my head and she wanted to have Raptor on her head. So I gave her my hat. Stand still so we can go see Raptor. Stand still. So I gave her my hat so she could have Raptor on her head. <laughs> he likes that hat. He likes being up high, but he, he can grab the hat a lot better than he can your hair. So he really likes hanging onto your hat and climbing up onto your head. Oh, hold still. Oh. I got them. This one is going to go run away. He's going to run away? Should we put him on your head again? Yeah. I'm going to put him in the shirt. Here, Daddy, put this. You need to do it again. Okay, be careful. Don't scare him. Okay, I'm be slowly. Yep, good job. Not be faster. slowly. Not oh. faster. Be slowly. No. Move slowly so you don't scare him. Oh, she want, he wants to come to me. It's funny, he knows the difference between me and other people. Daddy, hold and it seems to me that he prefers me. Look, he's trying to come to me. Maybe I'm just like reading into stuff. He's dummy. Ooh, are you okay? Yeah. He's in the camera. Yeah, he climbed up on the camera. It's okay. It's the only give it the hat. So, he prefers to be on my head, apparently. And, um,. Because he came back, <laughs> but Olive wanted her wanted him on her head, huh? <laughs> oh man, sorry, he came back to me. Oh, he's gonna slide. Please don't scratch me when you slide. There you go. Good job. He's getting better at that. He's okay. This monitor species loves, loves, loves heat. A great way to really bond with the lizard and incentivize them to stay close to you is to have this heat lamp. It not only makes them want to stay close to you, but it also puts them kind of into a trance, really relaxes them. And these aren't the most quiet of, of monitor lizards. They tend to be quite active. They tend to be on the spunky side. And so be able to put them in kind of a quiet trance, make them want to stay with you really helps to build a bond and build a trust between you and the lizard where you can begin to stroke them and uh, touch them when they normally wouldn't like it. But they're so relaxed that they'll allow more touching and more uh, uh, interaction than they might normally. If you're working with a reptile, especially a lizard or a monitor lizard, give it a try. It's, it's a pretty cool tactic. Yeah, it's really been a great tool and I honestly don't know where I got it from. I, I think I just kind of came up with it. If you guys have tried anything like this before, I, sh I guarantee I'm not the first guy to do it. Um, if anyone else has, has tried this before, leave a comment below. Let me know what your experience was, what animal you used it with. 
Um, seems like a pretty cool tool. 